folks, it's Patriot Nurse, and today we're going to talk about the real shelf life of pharmaceutical drugs and what, from my research, the FDA is not telling us. So, without further ado, let's really get into this. And before we really go too far into this, let me tell you that this has been somewhat of uh, an exploration for me because this is stuff that I was not taught in nursing school and that really, to my knowledge, nobody in medicine, whether they be pharmacist or doctor, has really ever been taught about in, in this scope. And the reason for that is because it is kind of deviating outside of what standard medical practice is, which is to go by the expiration date printed on the package, courtesy of Big Pharma. And the information that I'm going to put forward for you today is completely at your own risk. I assume absolutely no responsibility in this um, because really this, this is, if, if you're reading this and if you're listening to this, you're probably already at the place where you have a very healthy skepticism of anything that Big Pharma says. So let's go ahead and let's talk really about the real shelf life of some of these drugs here that are commonly stored for poop hits the fan type of stuff. And before we really can go too far into this, we have to start at base one, which is that there is a tremendous gulf, there is a vacuum, there is a lack of research on this subject, the true shelf life of drugs. And I think there's probably a reason for that. There is one substantial vat of knowledge, of research, that exists today regarding the true shelf life of an assortment of drugs. At this point, about 312 drugs. However, that information is barred off to the public because it sits in the hands of our military under the guise of the Shelf Life Extension Program, the SLEP. And the background behind the SLEP is that the, pretty much the military decided, you know, we're throwing away a whole lot of money and drugs here and really, we really want to know if, if this is true, if, the, if there is a legitimate need to throw away these drugs. So a few years ago, the military got together in cahoots with the FDA and says, hey, we'll cut you a deal here, or the FDA did one way or another. And they said, okay, well, we'll test these drugs, but the catch is, is that anything that we find that pretty much reinforces the commonly conceived notion that drugs last a little bit longer than what they say, anything that we find here in this program, you can't tell to the public. It's under wraps. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and I'm not going to delve too much into what I think they are, but I think you probably can get where I'm going with that. If you look on the military's website, and I'm going to give you these links here to everything that I've found. If you look on the Army's website, there's a little disclaimer here, and it says, SLE, SLEP administrators have fielded several calls recently from individuals wanting to share this information with local civilian counterparts. That is not permissible, as it is not only a violation of the terms agreed to by the FDA, but also a violation of the memorandum of agreement, blah, 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 blah. So basically what it says is, there are good people in the military who realized, hey, this could save a lot of people a lot of money, so why don't we tell them? And basically, upper echelon says, oh, no, no, the FDA says we can't do it. The FDA says, even though we know this stuff is true, and even, even though we know that these drugs truly last longer, you're not going to tell anybody. So, let's talk about what these drugs are. And everything that I have found here is accessible to you, the public, and I'm going to give you the links here. Let's talk about what's probably on your mind right now, which is, okay, this is great, this is great, Patriot Nurse here, but what, what can I take and what can I not take? According to what I have found here, and I'm going to put this all out there for you, there is a bracket here of drugs found by the SLEP that are not considered permissible to take beyond the expiration dates. And they are nitroglycerin, liquid antibiotics, insulin, water purification tablets, and mefloquine, which is a malarial treatment drug. These drugs right here are not considered safe to take beyond their expiration dates for a, a bunch of different reasons, but mainly because these drugs, if you look at them, especially nitroglycerin and insulin, these are things that are lifesavers, and you want to be able to bank 100% on their efficacy. So that's, that's considered the, the nether region, don't go there with, with drug expiration keep these drugs in their expiration and only use them with that. However, in the SLEP program, 
there were several drugs that were found to have a very long shelf life past their expiration date, and among them are Cipro. Cipro, according to the documents that I have, there, there are two numbers here given, but Cipro lasts on average, according to the SLEP, between nine and a half and ten years past its expiration date. Aha, uh -huh. a lot of money to be saved there. Wonder why the FDA didn't want that to get out. <laughs> Another drug here is Valium, Valium auto injector. Valium here, of course, if you are an epileptic, you know that especially with children who have seizures, uh, Valium is, is pretty important. The other drugs here are doxycycline, which lasts on average five years, atropine, an aerosol inhaler, and, and bunches of other stuff. There's the atropine aerosol, there's the atropine injectable, and uh, a couple other formulations, but atropine, the aerosol, lasts four years longer. Penicillin and tetracycline last on average at least two years longer than their expiration dates. And also Thorazine, Valium, Tagamet, and Dilantin, a seizure medication. These last on average two years past their expiration dates. Now there is a catch here with the tetracycline. From my research there was one gentleman who had a very severe type of reaction um, or death, I really, I just, I can't remember, but basically you had one gentleman who took expired tetracycline and it seemed that that did not go down very well. So, but that's the only thing that I really could find here from the tetracycline. The other thing with the SLEP program they found is that um, lactated ringers, ringers lactate, the IV solution we use for rehydration and a couple other things, LR and lidocaine last on average 33 months longer than what their expiration date is. So really a year and a half to two years, according to the SLEP, it seems to be pretty standard for that. So now everything here, if you can see this, this is a little table, okay, of, of some of the drugs here that were found. There really is not very much out here out in cyberspace on this, folks. So I did quite a bit of digging to try and find this, and it, frankly, it got so deep to the point where I was just like, you know what, I, I, can't, I can't go any deeper here. This is just, this is too much. So I have included here, for your benefit, the link so that you can look and find these for yourself. Again, I assume absolutely no responsibility with this, but I've had so many people that ask me, and rightly so, right? I wanted to know. I've had so many people who asked me about this that I just had to look it up and try and see if I couldn't dig up something on this for myself. So I hope this has been hopeful, helpful for you today, and uh, we'll, we'll see how the reception is for it. So uh, for now, this is Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye.